What's up DCS crew, it's Carlos back at it today with a gun review that's kind of different from, uh, I guess, some that you would typically see on the channel. I don't know if I've actually done a gun review yet, but if any, in any case, um, I want to do something about a single stack uh, pistol that actually predates everybody that you see on the table here by at least a decade, maybe more. Um, it predates the MMP Shield, it predates the Walter PPS, in fact this is the PPS M2, but it even predates the Walter PPS, as well as the Glock 43. Um, this was the original 7 plus 1 single stack that um, even the cops were commissioned to use. I think that they uh, commissioned this particular pistol for the NYPD to be able to go ahead and use as their off carry, and I mean... I, it's it's been around for quite some time so uh with no further ado we have the car arms k9 okay this is a single stack seven plus one steel frame pistol with hogue grips and yeah really cool stuff let's go ahead and check this out and uh compare it with our buddies on the table and see how it stacks up I'm going to go ahead and, and just give a brief introduction to the uh, the pistols that are on the table. Believe it or not, all of these are my personal carry uh, pistols. There are, is one that I got more recently, and um, I'll just start from right to left. So uh, the first one right here is my uh, personal uh, carry from Smith & Wesson. It's the Smith & Wesson M&P Shield in 9mm, okay? And this one actually has a seven round magazine that is flush with an eight round extended mag that is available uh, OEM okay there's a couple things that I've done to this guy that you probably wouldn't see you know I'll write other than maybe the color fill which I did in gray um, I did put uh, true glow TFO uh, night sights uh, that's the apex trigger and it's the full kit the duty and carry action and uh, enhancement kit great kit uh, these are the Hogue over mold grips and I have a see if you can see it from here the stainless steel guide rod great great pistol um, overall this is probably one of my favorite if not my favorite single stack carry pistol out of the three but um, I I'll tell you why it's not definitively my favorite so okay moving on this is the new uh, the newcomer to the nine millimeter pack that I have um, this is the Walter PPS M2 uh, great trigger out of the box by the way um, I mean this one is pleasantly unfired I haven't actually been to the range which is pretty sacrilegious but uh, photoluminescent sights this is completely stock it has the chamber uh, loaded indicator and it has the takedown uh, yeah the, the magazine uh, takedown on the left side for right now but it actually takes down just like a Glock with these two little prongs here that you would see typically on something like your Glock 43 so really good uh, ergonomic gun it, those these grips are awesome the uh, this uh, pattern that you have right here, it's not quite a stipple, it's more like a pattern that they that they kind of randomize, if you can see that right there with the PPS insignia. Um, aside from that, there are these waves that are on the sides, as well as in the front, and then a little bit of a, an arch here in the back, maybe you can see that right there. And that makes it an extremely ergonomic pistol. I mean, really, really nice. Uh, you know, Germans make some really, really nice stuff, and uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm interested in seeing on how this performs when I take it to the range. I heard it's extremely, uh, uh, you know, reliable, but we'll put that to the test, I guess, right? And now here's the stalwart of my uh, carry setup. This is my single stack nine of nines. Um, this is my Glock 43. There's been a couple of changes that have been done. Let me go ahead and unload it. Okay, so it's not loaded. All right, we'll start with the basics. There's the whole uh, overmold grip. There is the full uh, trigger uh, setup for the Glock. Uh, what is it? The the Hive Monarch trigger in this funky green. If I knew it was that, I would have just gotten it in black. To be completely honest, uh, True Glow night sights. Yes, yeah, the Banksy Panda. <laughs> uh, I guess base plate or, or back plate, and we have the um, the Pierce grip plus ones. The, what is it that the number yeah it's a pg 43 plus one 
and it gives me that nice little shelf on there. So yeah, that's what I basically have on this guy and uh, works flawlessly, let me tell you. Everything I, everything about this, uh, these three setups, I really like a lot for you know my own reasons. Now, aside from that, let's go ahead and talk about the Car K9. Okay, so uh, the car actually is a seven plus one uh, standard pistol. It comes with one magazine, stainless steel frame, and rubberized uh, Hogue overmold grip. So when you put this in your hand, you feel the heft. I mean, it's not like one of these polymer pistols here. You actually feel it. But the good thing about that is that it helps mitigate recoil a lot better than any of these three. Uh, it doesn't matter how light or how heavy the ammo is, how used you are to, uh, to you know, shooting any of these. When you put this baby in your hands and you shoot it, let me tell you something. Very, very nice, okay? So, um, as it goes, in 1996, they started uh, producing the K-Series. You can actually get this in 9mm and you can get in 40 Smith, Smith & Wesson. Uh, the nine millimeter is this version right here. This was on this is on loan from a friend of mine who asked me to go ahead and service the pistol for him And uh, I was more than willing to do that. So uh, more than likely this is going to be coming out and then shortly There's going to be a cleaning uh, 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 Excuse me an assembly and disassembly video on that. So go ahead and check that out um, So in 96 they came out with these right these have an eight pound double action only uh, trigger pull so let me go ahead and release that and if you notice the trigger, it has, it has just this take up right here, and then it hits that wall, and then you slowly bring it back about maybe a quarter, half an inch, and boom, nice crisp uh, release of that. Let's see if that fixes it. Let's get a reset. Oh, there's that reset. And there it is again. Okay, so um, the trigger pull is about eight pounds. And um, like I mentioned before, the NYPD was uh, actually commissioned, the New York uh, police, this was uh, basically approved for them to be able to carry off duty. But what um, caused them to stop doing that is I think in 2011, there was a mandate with New York City uh, police or just police in New York that stated that they had to have a heavier trigger pull on their guns and Carr was not able to go ahead and create a heavier trigger pull for this particular firearm so they scrapped it in favor of another one and that is the end of that so uh even in even in that case they are still in production um they're not i mean they're not common you don't really see them too common i mean you know because of the whole polymer you know fad craze uh you know call it what you will uh car doesn't really come out with a lot of new models but the truth is their stuff really works uh my friend joel actually loves his car uh, pistols and he talks really well about them and he owns you know H and K CZs I mean you know it is what it is but um, but yeah so this one in particular it came with uh, with two magazines and let me go ahead and see if I can go ahead and get the the other magazine here and bring it over I'm gonna bring the extension so um, evidently this uh, pistol when it's shipped it's shipped in a box with one magazine so that's a that's an obvious downer for me but the cool thing about it is the shelf that they put on this if you notice that magazine has like a little shelf that sticks out here on the side. And so it allows me to get those two fingers on the frame and then one half on the frame, half on the shelf, which gives me that full three finger grip, uh, which really helps with the sighting of the pistol, which by the way, these uh, sights are actually really cool. It looks like a, a lowercase I when you have that in your, in your sights. Let me see if I can go ahead and get that picture done. There we go. And that's basically what it would look like as a lowercase i uh, for you to be able to go ahead and uh, point of aim, point of impact, uh, sight this up. <clears throat> Excuse me, let me go ahead and get some water real quick. <sighs> All right, that cool, refreshing drink. <laughs> so, um, yeah, with uh, this for a particular mag plate, you also get the choice of the finger extension, which is slightly longer. And in case you wanna go ahead and see it, I have one right here. And there is some space between that and the actual firearm itself, but it gives you three fingers, I mean, definitively on this as well as a little more space just in case, you know, you got fat fingers. <coughs> Ooh, don't know what's going on for me today. <sighs> okay. 
Now, all right, back to the flush mag. So, um, how does it compare to these uh, on the table? Well, the irony is this is a seven plus one and I've configured each one of these to be able to go ahead and accept seven plus one. Uh, the M&P Shield, uh, if, as you know, it has seven round flush mags and then it has an extended mag, mag which gives it eight plus one. The Walter PPS M2 has a flush mag that gives it six plus one, and then you have the extended mag, which gives it seven plus one, and then you have an ad additional seven, well, excuse me, eight uh, round magazine, which gives a total of nine in the firearm, eight in the mag, one in the chamber. All right, now, uh, for the Glock 43, you have a standard flush mag, which gives you six in the, the, the um, the magazine one in the chamber and then with this particular extension that you can get uh aftermarket from pierce grip that gives you an extra plus one you can get the Turan tactical there's a bunch of different versions there's the victor's tactical there's there's uh the hive extension um that'll give you that plus one and some give you plus two plus three really uh the you know the sky's the limit as far as how um you know how this gun's marketed i mean let's face it it's a glock so um, these are all configured for seven plus one and the reason why I did that is because I wanted to go ahead and judge uh, Basically the overall dimensions and talk a little bit about them. So let me take two away And first off I will start with the Smith & Wesson M&P shield one of my favorites, okay, so <sighs> So this is the car this is the shield and this is basically how they look side to side Go ahead and start it like this so as you can see, the dimensions are pretty much almost identical, uh, you know, between the length of the barrel, you know, from the front to the back, from the, the, uh, the, the tail all the way to the front of the muzzle. Um, now, I know that the M&P Shield is 3.3 inches in uh, barrel length, so I would assume the car to be the same thing. I'm not looking at the specs, so just bear with me, okay? Um, the triggers, this one is a hinge trigger, which this is more of like the, the standardized um, trigger that you would find on a uh, 1911 or even a SIG. Uh, it's just a standard uh, look, but it does have the striker protection. Uh, so, you know, if you try to drop it, it is drop safe and um, it also has a magazine disconnect safety. So if you choose to disconnect the magazine and you have a live round in the firearm, which it doesn't now, it would still it would still fire if there was a fire uh, around in there. OK, so that's basically that. Now, um, let me go ahead and see if I could put these side by side. Yeah, I can do it this way. OK line them up like this and show the bottom and that way you can see just how much longer the firearm actually is so if I line it up just right um, you can see that the car K9 is a little bit longer at the bottom than the flush magazine that you would see on the M&P shield okay now uh, let's see here just that back okay so that's compared to the M&P shield it's obviously a lot uh, heavier because of the fact that this is a polymer frame with a steel slide this steel slide with steel frame rubberized handles so that's uh, your M&P shield <clears throat> on to the Walter PPS M2 okay uh, similar design as the Glock, like I said, uh, the hinge trigger is very Glock-esque, so is the takedown, the slide stop. Um, this is a little bit different, you're going to get a little bit more uh, functionality here than you would with most of the other ones, but in truth, I actually prefer the uh, the overmold grip that they provide with uh, this particular firearm. And the good thing about that is that uh, if you want to switch this to wood, if you want to switch this to Coca Cola or any of these really cool, sexy looking grips that you would get on typically like a 1911 style firearm, you can actually unscrew this, you can order it and install new ones, or you can install upgraded ones anytime. You cannot do that here, you would have to put an overmold on it and then. You know, it kind of cheapens the look. So that is something I did want to bring up compared to these two. Okay. Now, uh, like I mentioned, the takedown on this is very Glock-esque. And with this guy, that's uh, that's not really the case. So basically what you have to do is you have to take this firearm and you have to cock it back till it gets to that point right there in which there is a knot right here and you have to get something to basically tap that hard enough for this portion to be pushed out you pull it out and then you can go ahead and just click the trigger disassemble the firearm and 
go on uh, like nothing basically happens. So differences between the two, obviously it's, you know, uh, it actually feels a little bit thinner. Although, yeah, you can see that it is, uh, you know, significantly thinner on the slide. You, it is noticeably thinner. Let me see if it's longer. Let me go ahead and line these up together. Yeah, it looks like the Walter PPS is slightly longer on the slide than, than the car is. Okay, <clears throat> let me go ahead and see why I put these side by side. Which one has the longer magazine? Okay, they are about the same at seven rounds. Huh, okay, I wasn't expecting that. All right. So there you go. These are pretty much comparable with regards to the height dimensions when you're carrying it. I'm sure the bore axis has a lot to do with it too. This has uh, this cutout here, this, this basic relief for your three fingers and this one does not. It has a little, it's, it has a shallower scallop, I guess you could say than this one, but they both have it, I guess. So yeah, okay, cool. Then the sights are gonna be a little bit different. You have the standard uh, three dot sights, which by the way, um, the Walter PPS sights are some of the coolest, uh, uh, I guess, sights that you can find on the market um, that that come like this. This is the LE edition. This came with three magazines, a six, seven, and eight, and it came with photoluminescent sights. So basically what happens is, if you look at them, they're kind of like yellowish, but if I was to go ahead and turn off the lights here, these would actually glow for a brief period of time because they have been exposed to light. In fact, here, give me a second. Let me go ahead and see if I can get some light here. Where is my... There we go. All right, Mr. Olight is here. All right, Olight to save the day. So um, here is some light that's being shed onto the photoluminescent luminescent site. And as you can see, they are glowing in the dark and they'll glow for some time. Uh, not really too functional at night while it's already nighttime and you're trying to figure out where the sights are to get your sight picture together. But it is something quirky that you can go ahead and get with the gun that is... Uh, included obviously with the cost of the extra magazine. So, hey, I went ahead and I picked it up anyways. Um, so yeah, there you have it. That's the Walter PPS M2 compared to the, the Car K9. Now, last but not least, this is one that um, I carry quite a bit and I do so honestly because I live in Florida. Don't get me wrong, Glocks are great, but I just prefer, I, I prefer, you know, uh, variety as they say, it's the spice of life. So um, I'm not really big on the 43, but it's just, it's such a functional firearm and there's such a large aftermarket, uh, you know, accessory inventory for this. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's kind of like, uh, oh man, it's the Ontario rat two or rat number one of the, the, you know, the Glock industry uh, of the firearms industry. It's, it's a knife that sets the price point for this quality standard. <clears throat> okay. Now moving on. Uh, seven round uh, magazine because it's the plus one. Let's go ahead and show this to you one last time. Right here you have your standard six rounds, which would be flush or with a small finger extension that comes from OEM. And then you have the Pierce Grip uh, PG43 plus one that has been added to this already and it has some slight stippling uh, or raised stippling to mimic that of the. Uh, the stipple pattern that's on the firearm itself. Now, if you notice, the um, magazine release on this one is uh, circular, as opposed to the Glock, which is uh, larger and square. I do also wanna say that because of the fact that the magazines are metal, they drop a lot more freely, even though they have no uh, rounds in them, than the Glock polymer mags, or any of the other polymer mags in that case. The other two do have steel magazines, but the uh, the Glock has steel lined uh, polymer mags. So that's something to take into consideration as well. Um, these are uh, three dot night sights. These are not the stock sights. I just went ahead and I, I switched those. These are also true glow tritium sights. And one thing that I do is I take the 43 slide and I made it to a 43X frame to be able to go ahead and, and get a 10 round carry, kind of like a slim Glock 19. So these are the three. Uh, let's go ahead and see as far as dimensions, how this one measures up to it. Let me go ahead and see if I can line this up to the dimensions on here. Okay, so I've got that right there. Yeah, let me see if I can move this down. Okay. 
So yeah, they are pretty close. I gotta tell you, they're, they're, they're very similar when it comes to the length itself. Uh, as you can notice, I mean, it's negligible, the difference, okay? And uh, as far as height, let's see how this works out. I got a feeling that the Glock is gonna be a lot smaller. So, okay, this is where it gets kind of funky because the Glock uh, extension itself, it's, it, it starts off shallow, but then it kind of raises itself towards the end. So if you look at it from the side, you actually realize that it uh, actually sticks out just a little bit more than the standard uh, shelf uh, extended magazine base plate for, or, or the magazine base plate, the standard one for the Car K9. So that's something to consider as well, okay? Now, uh, aside from that, one obvious glaring detail is that all of these finishes, whether it's you know, the Glock with their, their Tenefer, their, their proprietary finish, their Melanite, whatever you want to call it, um, as well as the finish on the PPS and the M&P Shield, these are all black. Uh, they're stainless and then they've been coated with a proprietary coating depending on the manufacturer that you choose to purchase the firearm from. Now, in the case with the car, this is stainless steel. And one thing I actually like is while they haven't coated it, they, they did etch all of the, uh, the, the insignia in here, the K9, the car, car arms, Worcester, Massachusetts. Uh, the 9 by 19 which designates the caliber, stainless which designates the steel used on the frame and the slide, and then the, um, the uh, oh my gosh, what am I, the serial number, excuse me, all right, sorry, it's, it's late, folks. And you also have a stainless uh, barrel in there as well. Um, oh, another thing worth noting, <clears throat> the... Uh, the recoil spring in the car is different from the Glock 43 and the MMP Shield. And I believe, yeah, for the PPS M2 in that it is not captured. Um, there is an actual spring and a guide rod that is, is uh, compressed together when you place the the full, I guess, the, the, the combination of both into the pistol slide when you're pairing it onto the barrel. And that is something that if you are not too careful with, that spring will jump out into oblivion and you will never see it again. So just keep that in mind, okay? So uh, what are my final thoughts on this particular firearm? I'm gonna be completely honest with you. Uh, I didn't really know about this firearm. And when I, I you know, looked it up, I, I guess, honestly, if I knew that it was on the market and I had to pick between, say, a Glock 43 or a PPS M2 or the Shield, which that's basically what I did over the years. I actually switched between this one and this one. Um, I still wouldn't get this, and I'm going to tell you why. It's not, you know, because I don't like it. I think it's a really nice firearm, and let me tell you, I am positive that this is going to shoot better than these two. I mean, the way it holds, you know, it has some nice heft to it. It would be able to control shots. The trigger on this is really, really nice, honestly, for being an 8-pound trigger. I really like it. The, the, you know, the take-up is very clean. It's a nice, uh, you know, crisp break, and then a nice tactile reset, and there's nothing there for you to go ahead and extend past that wall. It's just the wall and then boom, okay? So, uh, you know, this has a better trigger out of the box in my opinion and the stainless, it, it gives it a really nice, uh, you know, uh, look to it as well as the fact that it has these hook grips which are nice and rubberized. This one has had some age and it's still holding up extremely well. You have the aftermarket upgrades. There's a lot of good that comes with this. Now, unfortunately, um, it's not all good because now I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the things that I felt that would have deterred me from getting this firearm. Now, number one, um, you know, this is the old dog, okay? And um, <laughs> there, there's a spa saying in Spanish uh, that says, Escoba Nueva Borra Bien. That basically says that, you know, um, the new broom, you know, basically brooms extremely well. Everybody likes the hype with a new gun, basically, okay? So it used to be the, the shield, and then it was the 43, and then it was the PPSM2, and now it's the P365, which, you know, is just a compact size like these, but it handles more rounds. You know, everybody likes having the next best thing, and the truth is the big thing now, and that's been th this way quite some time, are the polymer frames with the steel slides. You know, um, back in 96, let me tell you, man, if uh, you were carrying one of these off duty or, you know, concealed carry, this is pretty bougie, man. I'm not going to lie. This is badass. But even now, if you're going to pick this up, I think the MSRP on this is in the 700s. 
and you'd pick this up like for like the six six hundreds. I mean, let's be honest. You know, uh, picking up something like this uh, nowadays, being that it's what uh, twenty three years old. You know, it's almost at its twenty fifth anniversary, if I'm not mistaken. Or yeah, no, I think it is past twenty fifth anniversary because uh, this was done pre ninety six, if I'm not mistaken. But um, you know, even when it's past, you know, it's prime. It's a great gun, but uh, at six, almost seven hundred dollars, you know, I don't really feel that this is, you know, uh, a, a good deal, if you will. It's a great gun, but it's not a good deal. And I say that because it comes with one magazine. You know, yeah, it comes with the extension and stuff that you get, either the flat one or the extension. You can get it in in nine millimeter or forty, uh, but it's limited in that. You know, it doesn't have the aftermarket that some of these guys have. Um, it, it has a lot of heft to it, which is heavier than even what you would see from, you know, the Springfield line of pistols, which are pretty heavy, you know, polymer pistols. And, you know, while it's while it's awesome, you, you know, you, you just really don't have the following for a car as opposed to a Glock or, you know, uh, an M&P, you know, from Smith & Wesson, hell, even a Walter. So... That's the big issue with this particular gun. That's uh, everything else. I mean, you know, as far as, you know, uh, carryability and stuff like that. I mean, as you can see, the dimensions on it are just right to be able to carry. It's not too thick. It's not too thin. You know, it's just maybe marginally thicker than some of these other firearms. And um, they make night sights for this. So if you choose to go ahead and change that particular sight picture, you can always do that. But is it worth, you know, picking up? Uh, there are people, you know, that are old school that'll be like, yeah, man, I'll pick it up. It, you know, makes me relive some of the times where I was actively carrying it back in the day when I was younger. Yeah, okay, well, that's cool, though, man. But the truth is, there's a lot of newer stuff that's out. And um, while it's a great gun, I don't think that I would necessarily pick it over any of these, these three that are here uh, for just the simple fact that, you know, these are the emperor's new shoes, basically, <laughs> you know, his new clothes, uh, these get the job done and they've gotten the job quite well, uh, gotten the job done quite well, actually. So, um, now you, there is a glaring issue on the table, if you can see, and there are a lot of aftermarket upgrades. This one, I had to upgrade the trigger. So, so did I, uh, you know, I, I went ahead and I upgraded the trigger on this one as well. Uh, it has the overmold grips. This is an aftermarket extension and they have updated night sights. So, I mean, in this particular case, yes, um, I write out the box. If I would have switched everything, anything to make it more like these, I would have basically gotten an extra magazine and I would have gotten night sights and I would have kept it at it as is. And, you know, in all honesty, I might still have been within the price point of some of these. Uh, not really the shield, because I think that these are going in the under the sub 300s already, but the Glock 43, especially with the advent of the Glock 48 and the Glock 43X, it, you know, it's been pretty competitive as far as pricing. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, the Walter PPS uh, M2 is actually in the 300-ish range right now with these photoluminescent sights and the, you know, it comes with three mags. That's a really good deal, by the way. Uh, I don't know why more people don't have this. So uh, yeah, basically this is good, but I mean, I guess it's all functional and in, in, in retrospect, you know, I, I, I like it, but it's something that, uh, hey, if you, you know, if you carry it, great. I think it's a great gun. My friend swears by it. Uh, it's, you know, it looks really nice. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a looker. You know, but the takedown is not very easy to use. Um, you do get one magazine and, the, you know, the, the extra magazines are not cheap. Um, you do have to go ahead and change the sights eventually because I'm sorry that these are, if I'm not mistaken, these are polymer. No, these are actually, these are steel sights. So, yeah, you get steel sights with these, which is actually really good. Most of the other ones are polymer. Um, but, yeah, the trigger takes some getting used to if you're used to, you know, a five and a half pound trigger or something more like a carry. Uh, a trigger that's been lightened like that of the Apex or the Hive um, Monarch triggers. And uh, just there, there is there, it just lacks a lot of the aftermarket support. Um, but uh, if, if you can find yourself a dedicated, you know, leather or Kydex maker that'll take care of the Car K9 and put it in some good quality, 
you know, Kydex for a nice holster. Get yourself a couple of magazines, fill it up with ammo and get yourself some training. You really don't need all this other stuff. Um, this is actually just stuff that you can add to get that little extra um, uniformity between firearms. And that's really the reason why I update the triggers like that. So um, yeah, that's basically it folks uh, for the Car K9. Uh, thank you to our guests, Mr. M&P Shield, Mr. Glock 43, as well as Mr. Walter PPS M2. Be on the lookout for a review from this guy and a range report coming soon. In the meantime, if you have any questions, feel free to go ahead and contact me via Instagram at Daily Carry Solutions or by sending an email at dailycarrysolutions.com. Be sure to hit the subscribe button if you want to go ahead and check out some of the new material that I have updating on the channel. And remember... As always, if you EDC, think of DCS. I'll see you guys next time.